Hi, hello, g'day, kia ora, welcome to the studio. I'm Paula from Moxie Mojo, and this is day 19 of Ephemera 2023, your ephemera inspiration for December. Thank you for joining me for today's prompts. Feel free to craft along or sit back and enjoy watching my take on the prompts from Louisa and Barbara. So today's prompts, nature's treasure. Now I'm hoping that this may be a slightly shorter video for me, at least to film, because the last two I've had to leave an awful lot of footage on the cutting room floor, as the saying goes, because I just had so much fun that I kind of just kept creating and creating and creating. Um, this time I'm trying to keep it short for you and for me. When I saw this prompt, I thought about the different things that I could consider nature's treasure. And in the end, it came down to one thing alone. And that is gemstones and sort of crystals, that type of thing. Because my daughter collects them and has got an amazing collection. And she started her daughter on them, my granddaughter. And she's also started me into collecting crystals as well. So on the windowsill of my studio, I've got an amazing range of crystals. So what I thought I would do would be to make up something using crystals. And I have bought a digital kit last year with crystals from a book in 1912 from memory. Um, it had different gemstones from uh, like an encyclopedia from the era. And so I thought, oh, that would be perfect for me to use. And I was thinking about what I wanted to make. And I came up with an idea because... Last year, Louisa and Barbara came up with their animal journal cards that they used through each of the prompts. And so I've printed those out myself. And those I'm actually going to use to write my instructions on for the prompts that I do when I do my 2020 to 2022 ephemera because I'm going to go back and do the prompts so for the 2021 year I created my own set of postcards that I will do that for so I thought well okay this year I will do something like that for myself so I've created a set of eight um, essentially postcard size um, journal cards that I have, you know, printed out, and I've printed out each of them twice. So I've got these, and I'm going to use these for writing up what it is I do for my processes. If there's something I want to remember, do I need to do things in a particular order? Um, maybe some techniques that I want to remember. So I've got those to use. And I thought, well, that's kind of mean just keeping them to myself. So maybe I should do something else that I could share with anyone who's following my channel. Because, I mean, that's something that I've been really appreciative of and that my number of subscribers have jumped so much and I want to say thank you to everyone for following me on YouTube um, and also give you something that I think is pretty cool and hopefully you'll like it as well. 
So rather than my journal cards, what I've done is I have created this. Now it's a single sheet of cards and they're just under like normal playing card size. This is it printed out on regular copier paper. Now this is A4 printed out, you know, fill, fill the page. Um, this is printed on cardstock till my printer just decided to spit the dummy. So let's just pretend that's not there. Um, doesn't look too much different. Maybe a little bit darker on here. But I'm going to have, so I've said, I'm going to have this available in my Kofi account, or coffee account, if you want to say it that way, um, for anyone to download, and you can either copy what I'm about to do with it, or you can do your own thing. That's cool. Um, but yeah, it's a little wee thank you to you from me for support in terms of just looking at my videos and subscribing to my channel but just to say thank you and I hope you're enjoying enjoying the fair marimba because I know I am so here's some I've prepared earlier and cut out because I knew you weren't didn't want to sit here and watch me do that so I've got a one set of them so we've got four and four and we're just going to create something different so all I've done is I've cut them out I haven't inked them or anything I haven't distressed them I just wanted to have them like cut out so that you didn't have to sit through that so right now I'm going to do my distressing using walnut stain just very quickly around the edge and that's just to hide that cut edge we all do it um, we all know how to do it it's quick and easy um, not complicated at all and I'm not going to make it complicated I have got a second colour there if I decide to change my mind or maybe I'll do that on the second set I don't know but I wanted to give you a couple of options for using these um, and other than just straight as journal cards you can leave them bank blank on the back which is what I've done um, I usually forget to print anything on the back. I'm terrible for it. Um, I know a lot of designers create um, free pages. Oh, look, let's just do this while I'm yakking. A lot of designers create free, you know, backing pages for you. I can never remember to print them out, so I haven't designed one, sorry. I just tend to leave things blank or if I'm going to put anything on them then I will just back them with tea or coffee dyed paper. I really need to get out of that habit, I know. It's terrible but yeah, not a lot I can do unless I've got someone sitting beside me while I'm at the printer going print on a backing sheet and that's not going to happen at least I don't think it's going to happen if someone wants to rock up to my door then by all means you're more than welcome to come and sit beside me and tell me to print a backing sheet alright so two side or one side and then we are done All right, there we go wasn't that difficult put you out of the way right simple enough so now I'm going to use these to create two types of tuck spots I was thinking about 
you know, mulling over different ways that you could use them and kind of came up with this idea that I thought looked, you know, kind of cool. So hopefully you'll agree with me. So we'll look, put one, one lot aside for now and we're going to use this lot. Now, I was thinking, well, you know, what's a way that we could use them that is a little bit differently? So I want to use them for a tuck spot. So, yeah, that's fine. But I want to use them so that there's some kind of interactivity with them. So I thought, what better way than, and like, ha considering how we normally hold cards in our hands like this, so I thought, well, that's all very well putting them like that, but I can't see the gems that are on the front other than this front one, which this is my birthstone, so that's why that's on the top. So, I mean, what I'd like to do is be able to maybe spread them out a little bit or have them so that when I put them on the page, they can move and I can see them that way. So that was kind of where I was going. So I thought in order to do that, I probably need to put them like sideways on the page. And so I'm going to attach them by this corner here, this bottom corner. Because if I use this corner, they're going to turn. And when they turn this way, they'll be upside down. So that's why we're going to go this corner and I'll turn that way and be up the right way. So that's just one thing to bear in mind is when you're doing something with pieces that do have a directional point of view, consider which way you want to set them up. And we'll talk about that again with the, the next one. So we've got our stack of cards. We've got my awl and my temporary pokey tool, which is basically just an eraser that I keep my awl in. It's completely cracked down the middle. But it it's an ideal thing for poking through things like this. Now, I'm going to use one of these long Tim Holtz long fasteners. Now, the only pro I love these. The only problem is, is that they are so small that if I use my crocodile, I'm scared they're going to go through the hole. Even if I use the smaller hole of the two. So if I'm going to use these, I always use an awl. So I've stacked these up. And I am just eyeballing because we all know that's what I do. And basically poking that down and we've now got a hole in the corner. Now the only thing we need to bear in mind is that because that is quite close, as soon as I open up these pegs or legs or whatever you want to call them, um, of the fastener, they're going to be seen. Um, at least one will be. So what I'm going to do is I've put the longest one sort of into the card. And if I go kind of on that angle there to maximise the distance... And then what I'm going to do is, and let's just get out, we want my wire cutters, which is this one here. I mean, sometimes I, you could also use um, your Tim Holtz scissors if you've got them, but I'm trying to be good and not use those. So wire cutters, and I am just covering the end so that because quite often a little wee bits of metal like this will fly around when you cut them off with either scissors or with your wire cutters 
and so I just didn't want them to fly into a hitherto unknown area. And now we're going to flatten that down just a little bit. And yep, what I can see is that now that other end is poking out, so we will just lift that up as well. And let's just make both of them shorter. Just a smidge. Right, so now we've got these ones joined here. Now we're going to attach these onto a page in a minute. We're going to have a look at the second lot. Now, so these ones are going to go along the bottom of a page and flip up this way. Okay, bottom of a page and flip out. This set is going to go on the side of a page. So we're going to have it this way and they're going to flip around. So now what I thought I'd do for this one is actually spread them so that they were like this. So we're spreading them. These ones are spreading sideways, which is difficult to do with only one hand. And these ones are going to spread downways. So you can tuck things in this way or tuck things in this way with this one. So for this one, we're actually going to have them joined in a slightly different way. So we've got two that are facing up that way. We're going to join in that corner. Two that are facing the same direction, but we're going to join at the top corner. So they're going to be joined like this. And then we can spread them like this. So it means that you're not going to see them until you move either one sideways. But it gives you a different way of using them. Exactly the same cards, but we're going to use them in a slightly different fashion. So in order to pierce this one, because we want this corner, what we're going to do is we're going to turn these two upside down. So we've got the same corner here where my thumb is. Those two are upright. So are these two. But we're going to flip them up. And it's going to be this corner here that we are poking the hole into. So we're going there, and we're doing exactly the same thing that we did before, just eyeballing our hole, going through, and now we can put that away safely. But now we're going to flip these two over, and what it might pay to do, whoops, now that I've put that away, is to just go through and push these through to the other side so that we've got the hole going through because there's, you'll see there's a little wee paper poking out. doesn't matter so much for the second one, but for the top one, we do want it to look maybe a little bit tidier. So then we put them together, so we've got two and two, and remember which two need to be on the top, so we're going through two that are in the top corner, one and two, 
and then the two that are in the bottom corner. And then we're going to spread that open. But this time, I mean, you can... Um, clip these if you want to and we might do that just so that we know they're going to be hidden so that's one here it is and we'll do the other one there we go that's two put that in the rubbish so I can't hurt myself and then there we go so now we need to find a page in our journal so we have a journal what have we got So, I mean, we could put them on here. Not that one, this one we need for there. So, we can put that there. And then it will, oops, fan open. There, and then we can maybe put the other one on the next page. And that will fan there. Right, so I think we're going to do that. So the only one we're going to glue is this bottom one on the sideways one here. But when it comes to placement... You can either have it lined up with the corner of the page or if you want you can have it sticking out a wee bit and use that essentially as a page tab. Now if you were going to do that I would colour some of the back of this card. In fact let's do that now. So what we'll do is we'll take this and that's our back one, the sapphire. And we're just going to add some distress ink on there. And then just, because we don't want to get ink all over our cover again. Whoops, sorry if that's wobbling the table. So we can put that out and there is in essence our page tab. So we're going to use some of our glue. Now because we want to use it as a tuck spot, you can just go across the bottom. You can go down the side and then the bottom which is probably what I'm going to do because that means I've essentially created almost like a pocket there. So I'm going to come down the, turn around there because I don't want that to move. I'm going to come down this side and across, whoops, we got glue bubble the bottom of this back one only now I've got quite a lot of glue on there so I'm just going to just spread that out a little bit and then clean my fingers just because I don't want it to like encroach on the, po the 
pocket too far then I'm going to sit that there so I've got it tucked over the edge so I know how much is going to show and then we're going to stick from the bread back and up that side here we go and then what I might do is grab one of these and these are some mini um, paper clips and I got these actually from Timu but I know you can also get them from um, other suppliers as well um, Tim Holtz put some out and then I'm going to just put a little wee bread onto there to hold that but I can move it around I like how these are free moving and then I can tuck something behind this back one but I can also then tuck things in behind each of these other cards as well so there we go that's just going to sit there so that's that first one and then our second one we're going to attach up here and this time I'm only going to attach the bottom one again not these two and not this one so just this one here but we're going to go the side and the top or if you wanted to um, no that no I wouldn't do that because you if you were to glue one of these other ones down then you wouldn't be able to move them as well so we're just going to do this one in the top Sorry, that was me thinking on the spot. So, gluing up this one. And across here. I mean, you don't have to create both of them. Or if you wanted to put them both on the same page if you are using it just as a sample of different types of ephemera and then we're going to attach that one there and then that one can spread out so you've got them spread out there and like in this case I can just use the same paper clip or um, you can put a second paper clip on there to hold it and then this time you can tuck things under there I might need to just clip that one I'm just going to put this on temporarily just to hold it while that glue dries so you could clip something underneath there and then behind each of these and at the Hey, what this holds a surprising amount just like that so there is two really really simple um, tuck spots but they're really versatile I really like that idea um, and the fact that you can tuck into essentially four places in each of them is pretty cool so the links for the freebie will be down underneath the video um, I hope you try it thank you for everything once again um, I hope you're having as much fun as what I have been and doing this doing all these prompts and I will see you tomorrow for the next prompt